Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one here is from Leslie, uh, who is a 70-year-old woman with uh, who's E44 as well. Uh, and she says here, what will pick me up when I'm really dragging? What are good choices on KetoFlex? I eat a balanced diet, weight is stable, five feet three and 116. Excellent, six mornings a week, should ride an exercise bike seven miles, swim laps 30 minutes, wow, fantastic. Uh, I have coffee with butter and cream in the morning, but I run out of energy around 11, have a huge salad 12 to one with two eggs and one half cup grass fed hamburger, so yet I still by 2.30 really dragging. Okay, so you this is such a good question, Leslie, I'm really, I'm glad you brought this up. Because on the one hand, we can talk about you know, energy and energetics and, and how to optimize that. But the other piece here is that you mentioned um, on your report that you are chemically sensitive. So you are a perfect person to look at Dr. Neil Nathan's new book, uh, which, is, um, which is the uh, Sensitive Patients Healing Guide. Such a great job he did and has multiple experts weighing in. And one of the points there is, you know, if you've got these sensitivities and you've got chronic fatigue, that sort of thing, uh, you've got to get rid of that part of it. You've got to get your body to quit thinking about stress and threat before you're going to feel that boost. It's amazing that you're able to do what you do. And we do see even young people, people in their teens and 20s who have, I've been calling this camelback syndrome, but it's the same idea. They have multiple insults, multiple stress and threats, and their limbic system just goes into this mode when they now have chronic fatigue or they have fibromyalgia and they just they get depressed and they lie around often for a couple of years while they're trying to get back. So recognizing that this is an important contributor likely will be very helpful. Um, and meanwhile, you know, your scores have been very good. So I thought, you know, this would be a good one. Let's go ahead. We'll pull out your Let's pull out your, your uh, there we go, your report, and let's go over this. And here, let's see here. Okay. Okay, so here's Leslie's report. Let's pull that up here. Okay. So first of all, Leslie, uh, you have, let's come up to the top here. These are, this can be you know, very helpful to kind of put things, uh, you know, all together. You mention, so let's see here, here we go, uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so as you mentioned, you know, great, your BMI is 18, so already you're a little bit on the low side. You've been doing a lot of exercise. You would be a good person for cycling, as we talked about. Um, your blood pressure is good. Uh, that's excellent. Uh, and um, your scores are good. Um, your AQ21 is only four, which is literally borderline between normal and MCI. Um, your your uh, CNS vital signs are almost all above average. You are doing well. Your MOCA score was 29, normal. Your recode cognitive index, 79, normal. Uh, that's all good. You mentioned depression. Depression, when we see that, it's a tip off that we have to think about toxins. So you have a you know very much of the profile of someone who's been exposed to some of these things. Um, you mentioned here some history of concussions and head trauma. Um, you mentioned the hysterectomy early in life. Um, a Mayo Clinic study showed that that increases risk for Alzheimer's disease. So again, we want to get on top of this, and it's good that your scores are, are doing so well. You mentioned chronic fatigue. So again, that immediately tells us, be on the lookout for toxins or tick-borne or chronic infections. You mentioned highly sensitive to chemicals. Same thing. That tells you that your brain has gone into that switch where it's trying to protect you. It's saying, there's been so much insult here. I'm just going to make you hypersensitive so that you'll stay away from these things. You mentioned the ice pick pains, which is something Dr. Shoemaker has pointed out, very common with SIRS. So again, coming back to these toxins, you mentioned some vertigo, which you can also see uh, with that. You mentioned headaches. Again, all of these are characteristic of this. You mentioned anesthesia when you were young. And again, multiple times, um, actually since you were 40, again, some toxic addition, dental amalgams, root canals, sleeping less than seven hours a night. And then you mentioned uh, problems with calculating, reading, finding words, organizing, and recognizing faces. These are all these non-amnestic toxin-related problems. So again, you're fitting them you know, very much into that sort of 
uh, suggestion. You mentioned the two copies of ApoE4, and then your um, your glucose is actually quite good. Your HOMA IR is normal. Your hemoglobin A1C is normal. All that is great, uh, and your uh, your cortisol is a little on the high side. You are you know you're a little stressed out here. Uh, your DHEA is actually very high. Uh, and, um, and so that's something that needs to be looked into. Your pregnenolone is on the low side. Um, and then your, you know, potassium's on the low side, your uh, magnesium's on the low side, uh, and um, your MMP9 is quite high. It shouldn't be more than 332. Yours is 777. So again, it goes along with everything else. Your TGF beta one, the same, it's 6340, quite high. And your VEGF is high, which is again, one of the things that Dr. Shoemaker pointed out. So you have everything pointed in the same direction. Now you also do have some vascular risk with a high LDL particle number, high triglyceride to HDL ratio, high triglycerides uh, and uh, a very high total cholesterol. With your ApoE44, that's not too surprising. Um, and again, we talked earlier about things like Zetia that may be helpful, uh, but I would do this in conjunction with everything else. Your glutathione is low. Again, um, almost your entire profile is one of someone with exposure to toxins and or some of these tick-borne illnesses. And you have had a slight dip in the executive function. Again, the non-amnestic part, your memory uh, score, very good. So I think that there's a tremendous amount that can be done here. Uh, and let's bring this back here and come back to your score. And, and, um, and what else would you, any other things we should focus on uh, to help out here? She, um, she mentions that she does have simple carbs in her diet. It may be that she needs a little bit of that to keep her BMI where, where, where it is, but um, I don't, I can't tell if she's uh, taking ketones for extra energy. So that might be something that she would, and I would, I would probably go with the key one or key four um, uh, choice. She mentions that she gets uh, leg cramps. So what I find uh, often is that people are not drinking enough water or are not adding enough electrolytes. So that's something to look at. We have one patient in the study who says, well, I, I only drink water if I feel thirsty. And he's got a very high specific gravity on his urine. So we told him, no, you need water. You need to set out two liters of water every morning and make sure that you drink all that. And if you're out in the sun on a hot day, you need another half a liter, et cetera. So um, a lot of times people feel like, um, they're only dehydrated if they're if they're thirsty, and that certainly does not um, prove to be true. Um, so, yeah, um, she she then talks about uh, uh, P tau, which of course uh, we're very interested in, and I'm sure um, that uh, we're we're going to be uh, getting more and more people tested with P tau and using that to identify their their degree of, of uh, problem and also follow their p tau to see it improve. That's our yeah, great point. And I should mention, you know one of the artifacts you can get, p tau can be abnormally low with obesity. And we just had a very interesting situation that uh, that Kat Toops mentioned, uh, one of the physicians in the current trial where she had someone who was overweight, and they had a p tau value that was a little bit high, but not super high. Then the person did very well, dropped 35 to 40 pounds, did very well cognitively, but the p tau was actually now a little higher. Um, and, and so this may have been related to the fact that, you know, the obesity is gone. So you're not going to have a, an abnormally low one anymore. In any case, let's come back to the energetic. So for the energetic part, but remember that in the long run, the key here is going to be getting rid of this uh, hypersensitivity, chronic fatigue, limbic system problem. And again, this is where the book is so good. Please talk to your physician about DNRS, which uh, has been helpful to many. Um, but you can, for energy, creatine, alcar, ketones, as Anne said, CoQ, 
mitochondrial support, nicotinamide riboside, NMN or nicotinamide, any of those, urolithin A. Um, but again, I think you're going to find that you're going to have to get out of the the limbic changes before you're going to get a, a, you know get the best outcome. As far as supporting electrolytes, which you mentioned, um, uh, electro pH uh, is one I, I like to use it myself. Um, Dr. Mimi Guarneri suggested it. Um, the other one, Dr. Berg has a very nice one uh, with electrolytes as well, which is very similar. Um, a lot of people like LMNT. Um, there are lots. Um, it's important to look to see, are you having cramps more because of potassium or sodium? Uh, it's because there are going to be differences in the way you address those, um, but those are all helpful. Um, you also ask about ubiquinol and CoQ. Um, this um, UB decarinone is simply CoQ10. Um, and as we mentioned before, it's turned out that ub ubiquinol, which sounded great when it first came out, I mean, it's it's converted to ubiquinone in your gut before it's ever absorbed anyway. So I think it was... Uh, a little bit what people used to make fun of, you know, with vitamins, expensive urine. Uh, so, you know, one way or another getting this, you don't necessarily have to have ubiquinol. And then, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Ram Rao mentioned about tau. So tau is really interesting. Uh, as we've talked about before, tau is like bolts. And if you're going to put a, an extension on a neuron or an extension on your house, you're going to put some structure there and then you're going to bolt it in place and the tau is the bolts. And so when you have a signal that says, oh, we got to collapse, we're going to go into synaptoclastic state, we're pulling back because of these insults, we're going toward protection, then what you do is you have to pull that tau off quickly. And the way you do it is to change its shape. And the way you change its shape is to phosphorylate it. So you phosphorylate that. And when you measure this phospho tau, you are measuring the fact that your brain is saying, pull back, pull back. And the 217 is quite specific for the pullback of Alzheimer's disease, which is nice. Um, and by the way, you can reduce it um, with the protocol, and you may consider adding some lithium orotate at 10 milligrams or 20 milligrams a day. Um, lithium does have some inhibition of, of um, an enzyme. It's called GSK3 beta, which is the major tau phosphorylating enzyme. And so that that's uh, that's a helpful way to go. Um, also, things that will increase anything that will increase protein phosphatase 2A, PP2A. Um, and by the way, APOE4 um, actually uh, reduces uh, PP2A. Uh, so it leaves you with more phosphotal. Um, and then you mentioned here some teas, uh, black, green, and bedtime teas. And uh, there's traditional medicinals, puka herbs. Uh, Gaia, um, uh, Arbor, Rishi, Mountain Rose Herbs, Numi Organics. So there are numerous of these things. And what do you recommend for people who are looking for non-toxic tea? Well, I think it's good to look for organic, obviously. All, all, all types of tea will come as organic. Um, but also, you know, which, what we found out with chocolate uh, dark chocolate, which a lot of people think of as a health food, um, uh, many, many um, supposedly high-end chocolates are very, very contaminated with lead and cadmium. And so that turned out. So I like to recommend that people, you know, look at um, the Environmental Working Group and see what they recommend, see if they have recommended uh, teas. They, they definitely uh, have a tremendous amount uh, of research and a lot to offer. And also Consumer Labs is a really good source for kind of an independent evaluation of products in terms of their uh, toxicity and other health benefits. So those are some resources that I think people can use in general to, to look at all kinds of products, including, you know, your cleaning products, your, your, um, hair products, your skin products, et cetera, et cetera, to uh, find uh, optimal ones that are optimal both for you, for, for humans in general, but also uh, for environmentally uh, better for the planet. Absolutely. Yeah, EWG has been really, really helpful. 